Hey guys, welcome to a new video. The quest for more winter clothing continues. As today I want to make something really quick and simple. A one day project, if you will. I want to make a really cute corduroy pinafore dress. Pinafore dresses are a significant part <laughs> of what I wear in autumn and winter because they're so easy to combine with a nice warm sweater underneath. So I got this lovely mustard yellow I don't think it's an actual corduroy, but it's like this beautiful ribbed fabric. It is quite thin. It is a little bit thinner than I expected when I ordered it. But I keep saying this, but I'm, I'm still very inexperienced when it comes to picking out fabrics and materials. But I think it should still be nice for the purpose that I want it for, which is to make a pinafore dress. So I have quite a bit of it here. So I think I should be able to do a nice knee length, maybe a little bit past knee length, a full circle skirt, and then just a simple pinafore like flap bit down the front with some straps, some cute buttons maybe. I think that would be really fun. I'm gonna start by drafting my skirt pattern I think and let's get started. In my opinion a circle skirt is one of the easiest things to make. A full circle skirt is basically just a circle with a hole in the center for your waist. So if you want to cut this out of your fabric, once you fold your fabric in half your skirt will look like this. And if you fold your fabric twice so that you have a corner here with folds on both sides it looks like this, right? A quarter circle. So this is my preferred shape to work with. It's the easiest to cut out of your fabric, least chance of um, you know getting wobbly over here. So if you want to determine that shape, you will need two measurements. You will need to know your waist circumference so that you know what distance you need here and here. And then you will need to know what length you want your skirt to be so that you also know this measurement. Luckily, there are tools online that you can use to calculate those distances that make it really quick and simple. I will leave the link to the one I like to use in the description box below so you can go check that out. But I will just um, go ahead and calculate this for myself and then we can lay out the fabric. For the website I linked below, you will need your waist measurement, which is really easy to take. If you want to wear your skirt with something tucked underneath and you can just take your measurements over your clothing or over uh, any shirt that you are wearing so that you know how wide it needs to be and how much wearing ease you need because this website does add seam allowance and hem allowance to your measurements but they don't add wearing ease so you need to do that yourself. Wearing ease is basically the little bit of room you need to add on top of your exact measurements to make sure that a garment is actually comfortable to wear. Keep in mind that especially your waist tends to expand throughout the day Mine does uh, pretty dramatically, so I like to leave myself a little bit of room in my waist area. Um, so you can measure over your clothing if you want to make a garment that is going to go over clothing. Otherwise, you can just measure on skin. Uh, so you need that measurement and then you also need to determine the length of your skirt. This website gives you three suggestions for a mini skirt, a midi skirt and a full length skirt. Um, and they have kind of standard measurements for those, but you can always just check from your waist to the bottom of your measuring tape to see how long a skirt will turn out. And if you don't like the length of the standard measurements, you can add or subtract a few centimeters there. I just remembered that when I ordered this fabric, um, they actually didn't have enough left on the board. So I got a little bit less of this and a little bit more of a different fabric that I have. That's okay, I'm just going to make a half circle then instead of a full circle. So my fabric is only folded over once um, and I changed the settings on my circle skirt calculator to see what I need um, lengthwise. Now, so what I'm going to do is just use the full length of this fabric for the length of my skirt. Can't make it any longer because this is the, uh, the maximum length I can get out of this fabric. So how I like to draw out my skirt is that I just hold my tape at the corner here. Something else you could do is cut out a piece of string that is the length of your final skirt or the length that you're looking for and use that. You could then secure it here and then tie, attach, attach a pen to it and um, do the whole 
swiveling thing like that. I don't necessarily think that it's easier. I just keep moving my tape measure to the side a little bit. And then when I'm cutting, I can just kind of connect the dots to see the length of my skirt. So I keep one of the ends at the corner here and the other I keep making little lines at 75 centimeters in my case. And then for the small circle that's going to be my waist, I just use the calculation that came out of my circle skirt calculator and I do the same thing. It's a new day. My skirt is all cut out here. It turned out a little shorter than I hoped for, but generally when you do a half circle, you need a little bit more room because the waist needs to be bigger than when you do a full circle. So yeah, that ate a little bit of length, but it's still long enough to be decent and wearable to me. So I'm gonna continue working on this today and start drafting the top portion of the pinafore. But before we do that, I wanted to take a little moment to talk about today's sponsor because this video is very kindly sponsored by Anna Luisa, my favorite jewelry brand. You guys know I love working with them and I am very happy to be an ambassador for them this year. So they are currently running a holiday sale on their website. Editing Lucy here, coming in to tell you that I actually just received word from Anna Luisa that they are doing a bigger sale than they were expecting. And the new sale is actually buy one, get one 60% off. So if you are still looking for some holiday gifts for your loved ones, I highly recommend checking them out. There is a link in the description box to take you straight to their website and they have a absolutely beautiful collection right now. I love all of their pieces with lab grown diamonds. I'm wearing two of them today. Let me get up close so you can see a little bit better. I have two necklaces here and Ana Luisa is a sustainable brand so they only use lab grown diamonds for their pieces as well as recycled gold which I absolutely love. All of their pieces are super beautiful, dainty, minimal. I absolutely adore the style. Very elegant pieces, suitable for many occasions. Perfect both for everyday wear as well as special occasions. And I honestly think these would make absolutely perfect gifts for your loved ones. Their pieces are fairly affordable, but fantastic quality. I have been wearing their jewelry for years now and all of it still looks amazing. And if you're looking to make your gift extra special, they have beautiful velvet jewelry boxes as well that are just absolutely gorgeous and perfect for traveling with. Once again, there is a link in the description box that takes you straight to their website. Definitely be sure to check it out. I absolutely adore their stuff. So yes, I want to give a massive thank you again to Anna Luisa for sponsoring this video. And now let's get started on this top. What I really love for this dress is to have it close in the front. So to have the entire thing closed with a row of buttons from the top all the way to the bottom and have that be the closure. Since I did a circle skirt on a straight pattern, the stripes in the back are horizontal like that. And I want the vertical stripes to be in the front. If I want to make a simple kind of square pinafore top, because I do want to keep this fairly simple, this project, I would need two bits, two rectangles that slightly overlap in the front here and then I need two straps that go from the shoulder to the back and I would need a waistband that connects these two front flaps <laughs> around the back and also helps to finish off the waist of the skirt. I think it's time to measure and start drafting. <laughs> so I have already drafted the two flaps of the pinafore top. So here we are. I have two, my two front pieces that I'm going to cut out like this. I have one on the fold here um, that's going to save me one row of stitching. You don't necessarily have to do it on the fold. But I have two identical pieces here that are ju then just going to overlap so that I have room for a row of buttons in the center here. And then I'm going to use the rest of this fabric to make my straps, which I want again to have the stripes running across horizontally, but I also want my stripes to, long, to run along the length of my waistband. So I'm going to cut out the waistband in this direction as well. And the waistband is then going to have horizontal stripes. This is all very theoretical. I think it's all going to become much more clear as we just do it. So I'm going to cut out this 
these front flaps, then measure on my body how long I need my, st my straps to be, add a little bit of seam allowance and cut out the straps as well, and then measure how much I need for my waistband. And to measure that, I'm gonna use the width of these, because the waistband is going to connect to my front top flaps. All right, let's just do it. I will show you once I have the pieces, it's gonna be much more clear. <laughs> So here we have one of the front bodice flaps. This is the waistband that's gonna go here, and this is one of the straps that's gonna go here and then attach to the waistband eventually. For now, we need to start sewing this closed. I have my fabric turned inside out here, and before we move on, let me just say, this fabric is absolutely infuriating to work with. Do not recommend using this fabric, it curls up like crazy, just all the time. It sheds these tiny fibers that I keep breathing in and it's just horrible fabric to work with. And it's stretchy in like the worst way possible. Anyways, moving on. The first thing I'm going to do is just separately sew the strap closed. So I'm gonna sew along one of the sides, one of, one of the ends here, and then along the side like that. And I'm gonna leave one of the ends open. So this is one of the two flaps on the front and the strap is going to come out of it on this corner like that. So since we want it to end up this way, but this is inside out, we need to actually sew it to the inside so that when you flip it inside out, it will stick out of the outside. From the inside, make sure that the outer edges line up. I'm gonna leave a little bit of room for seam allowance on the side. Okay, so that's the strap inserted and then we need to do the same thing with the waistband and we want to make sure with the waistband that the open edge is on the bottom so that we can eventually pinch the skirt in between these two layers. Since we still want to be able to pinch the skirt in between these two layers we need to make a little split in the bodice like that so it's going to be more or less y-shaped so I'm gonna start sewing now I'm gonna sew along the top here and then along the sides all the way up to here and then I'm going to open this up and I'm going to sew once more along here and then we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so when you do the other side, you need to be really mindful of where you place pieces. So I have the second strap attached here in the top, same way as we did last time. But the waist strap is already attached to the other part. So we need to make sure that it is lined up correctly. It comes out the right side and it isn't twisted anywhere. So that is on the same edge as we have the strap. And it is attached in the same way as it is on this side with that little Y shape. Now I'm gonna sew all of this and this one wasn't cut on the fold so I need to start sewing here and do three sides. The 
next up we need to prep the skirt so first thing I'm going to do is hem the bottom and for a circle skirt I always recommend doing a rolled hem which is just a very small hem like this where you fold the fabric over once and then you fold it over once again and you sew along here and then I'm also going to do that to the sides also do a rolled hem because we need as much of this width as possible so that we can still create a little bit of that overlap Alrighty, so I tried finishing the skirt and I attached the waistband to the skirt. We now have the framework of the dress more or less done and I have decided that I detest this fabric. <laughs> I hate it so much. It does not do what I want it to do. It, oh, it's horrendous and I'm starting to actually dislike the project because of it. So what I have also decided to do is not torture myself with the button-down front. I feel like if I put this through my buttonhole maker my machine will break and nothing will happen to this fabric because it is stretchy and fluffy and horrible. But since it is stretchy I think I might be able to pull this over my hips or um, over my upper body to put it on so it maybe doesn't even need actual buttons. So I am going to base this shut and do faux buttons and call it a day. <laughs> oh, I had such high hopes, such big plans for this project, but the fabric ruined it. Oh, fabric choice is important, guys. Like I always say, I'm just gonna repeat it once again. If you are a beginner, always use non-stretch cottons or linens. Those are the easiest to work with. A simple weave, <laughs> kind of medium to lightweight fabric. That is the easiest to work with and I should not have touched this stuff. I have marked out where I want my buttons to go. They are five centimeters apart. It's going all the way down the skirt. Look at this. Look at this edge. It's horrendous. Fingers crossed I can still save this dress. <laughs> Okay, the buttons are on and they do help make it look a lot better. I've also removed the basting along the ugly edge, allowing it to kind of curl up and disappear from sight. Eventually I might just go in and hand stitch this down in its curled up state so that it provides a little bit of a cleaner edge. I think that will help a lot. But it is now time to do the straps and I think since they are fairly long, I think I'm gonna do them crossed somewhere around here. There we go. It is finished. I don't hate it as much as I <laughs> did when I was making it. I definitely don't love it as much as I expected when I started this project. This, this fabric just gave me a lot of trouble. It was very difficult to manipulate and very difficult to make it do what I wanted it to do. Originally, I wanted to do some really cute top staged pockets. I, I don't dare to <laughs> now with this fabric. All in all, the end result I mean, I don't hate it. I think it's really cute. Maybe it's a little bit too cute. I feel like the style combined with the length, because it is above knee length, which is shorter than I'm comfortable with nowadays. I feel like it, it looks a little bit juvenile, maybe. It is really cute and it was a very quick make. If it hadn't been for all the fabric trouble, um, it would have been even faster. <laughs> so I did, in fact, hand stitch along the rolled edge here. So yeah, the whole thing looks a bit poofy and like poorly finished, if I may say. Like the whole, it, it just looks like there's a lot of bulk in the fabric everywhere and that is because there is, <laughs> because the fabric is just rolling up all around. The hems are rolling, everything is rolling, the seams are rolling, it's just, yeah, horrendous. Yeah, that is the end of this video guys. This is not my favorite. 
but it's all right and i hope you enjoyed watching anyway don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for lots more sewing as well as beauty fashion and lifestyle content don't forget to check out anna louise's holiday sale through the link in the description box below and get your hands on that beautiful beautiful jewelry thank you so much for watching guys there is another video here that i think you might also enjoy you can go watch next and i will see you very soon in my next one bye